Before we get started, just a quick announcement. I have a book written on the subject of swimming. It's called Just Keep Swimming and it is available right now to download for free. Yes, you heard it right. For free, you can get your copy right now, but it's limited to only the next five days, okay? So, you can pick up my book for free, totally free on Amazon. The link is down below. Just click it and download it right away so you can get your own free copy, but it's only limited to the next five days. So you have to hurry, click that link below and get your book right now, okay? Welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna talk about three more tips or three more ways to improve your breathing. Breathing is so important when it comes to swimming. It is the foundation to it all. And yet, a lot of us still struggle with blowing our bubbles or keeping the water from going down our drains. I understand it, I totally get it. The water can be really powerful and it's really hard to fight back. And it, you don't really fight back, you just need to not allow the water to take over you. That's, that's all it is when it comes to breathing. Not allowing the water to enter, enter your system. But so many of us still struggle with that concept. I mean, it sounds simple on paper, you know, blow your bubbles, that's it. And then you're swimming, no. It can be a lot more complicated than that. So I'm gonna break down three more tips. I know I've covered this topic many times before in other videos, but I'm gonna give you three new tips that I've observed from watching my students learn how to breathe for the first time. So here we go. The first tip that I recommend is to be bold when you're blowing your bubbles. Uh, and you're wondering, what do you mean by bold? Well, when you think about it, when you're new to swimming and you're new to blowing your bubbles, say if you're like new to singing karaoke, what happens the first time? you get nervous. And when you get nervous, what happens? You become timid. You know, like you probably sing softly, <laughs> right? Nervously, right? Same thing goes with blowing bubbles, actually. A lot of my clients or a lot of my students, when they blow bubbles in the pool water for the first time, they're very timid. And I can hear their bubbles underneath the water because I listen in on them. And they blow bubbles like, like the breath is so weak. The breath doesn't come from the diaphragm. The breath, it's just not pronounced. You gotta think of it this way. If you're gonna be swimming for long periods of time, you're gonna need to have a strong and consistent breath, okay? Just like Okay, so you have to be the opposite of timid. You have to be bold, right? Sometimes you gotta think like an opera singer, like, like this is your diaphragm. When you're in the water, you gotta train your, your system to, to think like this. And what, you see those noises that I'm making with my mouth? You gotta think like that. You've got to be bold, as in you have to blow it all out like the Hulk. You gotta blow it all out like an opera singer. Whatever image comes to mind, your mind, when you're trying to be bold, being loud, being crude, that's where you have to be in order to fight that water out. Fight back, you know? Keep that water out of your system. Ooh. And don't worry about pissing off other people. I know some, some people have asked me, well, what if you're too noisy with your bubbles? So you'll never be too noisy with your bubbles, okay? The worst things, worst case scenario is if you're too weak with your bubbles and you, you start inhaling all that, that pool of water, that's gonna be a problem for someone. And most likely that person's gonna be a little lifeguard. Do not be afraid to make noises with your bubbles, okay? Do not. Do not be afraid to make that big breath and blow it out loudly. Get used to it, okay? They won't say, please stop making noises, sir. You're, you're disrupting the, the other members. No, they will never say that to you, okay? Take action with your breathing. Be bold is what I'm saying. Don't be timid. Second tip that I can offer you in terms of improving your breathing is do cardio. And when I say cardio, I'm saying jog for at least a minimum of 20 minutes to an hour. A lot of people, they approach swimming for the first time and they, they keep getting frustrated because they can't do more than one lap or two laps or three. I get it. it some, part of it has to do with your technique. Part of it has to do with your breathing. But another 
part has to do with your cardiovascular system. Some people have never ran or have done, or never done cardio their entire lives for more than like say 20 minutes, you know, outside of swimming. And they expect to miraculously just keep swimming forever. It doesn't work like that. Swimming is a cardiovascular activity first, okay? I compare swimming to jogging in the dry land world. And if you haven't jogged for more than 20 minutes to say an hour, then you won't understand the concept of, of swimming for continuously forever. I mean, yes, there's a little bit of strength involved when it comes to swimming because you're pulling all the time with your arms. Yes, no doubt. But at the end of the day, it's your cardiovascular system that's going to determine whether you swim one lap or 100 laps. Okay, so if you don't have a strong cardiovascular system under your belt, then you're not going to be able to swim continuous laps. So what I recommend all beginner students to do is to first try to jog outside. Don't jog on a treadmill, please. A treadmill is just it's not even close to the real world application. Jog outside, okay? I want you to jog outside consistently, consistently for a minimum of 20 minutes. Why 20 minutes? Because anything less than 20 minutes is just too short, okay, for your system to really feel it, the effects. And when I'm talking about effects, I'm talking about the flow. Your, your, your body's state of flow. Because when you're jogging for a long period of time, your cardiovascular system really kicks in. It really has to become efficient. Your arms, your legs, your movement, your breathing, everything has to be efficient in order to be consistent. Same thing goes with breathing. You have to find that, that state of flow, you know? We call it like being in the zone, you know? It's like you don't even have to think anymore. It's just, you're just an engine, you're a machine. You know, runners, and you know, when we all start out in the beginning, yeah, we, we feel aches and pains and we get cramps and we can't sustain it for a long period of time. But once you get over that hump, the, you know, the 10 minute hump, 15 minute hump, and then 20 minute hump, you're just running. You, it just feels like, yeah, it's like a breeze. You can't even feel it. You're just, you're in the zone. You're, in, you're a machine. Your body is. And then you can just think about whatever else you want and just keep going. Just adapting to your environment. That's the problem with treadmills. You can't adapt to a treadmill. A treadmill is flat. It's always flat. You can adjust it to go up or down, and faster or slower. But outside, there are a lot more elements that you cannot control, like the weather, the wind, the sidewalks, the roads, the pavements that you're running on, the obstacles that are in your way. All those factors, it's, it's just very similar to swimming. The water, you have to adapt to the water, okay? So, jog outside consistently, minimum 20 minutes. If you can do that, then you can, you know, set yourself up right for swimming continuous laps. All right, so my third and final tip to breathing better when it comes to swimming is to start off slow. <laughs> I know, what? Start off slow? Yeah, it's very easy. Let me tell you this. When you enter the pool for the first time, what do you do? You probably do some sort of front crawl. You run and gun it, and then you just give it your all, and then you huff it and puff. <laughs> And then you, you, you gas out after one or two laps. Think of it like this. Your body is just like a car. You can't turn on your car and just whip it up to like 100 miles per hour like from the get-go. No. You have to warm up your car. Okay? Say if it's wintertime. Say if it's summertime. Okay? The body adapts according to its environment and conditions, how it feels on that day. So warm up your body first. Don't try to just enter the pool and just boom, start doing continuous laps all of a sudden and expect success. No, it's not, it doesn't work that way. What I do usually is I enter the water and then I do like one or two laps of front crawl. And then I stop. Then I switch to upper body exercises. So what does that mean? That means I start wearing hand paddles and I, I train my arms with hand paddles, okay? I start doing laps and I, I take it down several levels, okay? I don't go like 10 out of 10, like swimming exertion, okay? No, it's always like six, five, maybe seven most. And then, once my upper body is ready and warmed up, I move on to the lower body. So what do I do with lower body? I hold a kickboard with both arms out in front and I just kick. I just practice my kicking consistently. 
dun 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 and that's the rhythm you have to pay attention to okay a lot of you are showing me footage of your kicking it looks like a hummingbird hummingbird can sustain its wings but you cannot sustain this for more than one or two laps i guarantee you okay the amount of physical exertion required to do in the water like that with your feet it's not gonna last long okay i don't know who you are but it's not gonna last long okay you have to be like a tugboat with the lower body the tugboat sounds like this that's how I kick. That's how I consistently kick using only my feet back and forth from a lane. And that's how I get my workout in. Physical exertion would be like a four or five at most, okay? I don't push it because if I push it, I'm gonna cramp up or my feet are just, just gonna be filled up with lactic acid and it's all game over. Don't push it when it comes to kicking alone, okay? Go slow, expect to go slow and just be in a slow lane if you have to practice this drill because you're going to piss off a lot of people assuming in the fast lane if you try to do it. So don't do that. Once I warmed up my upper body, once I warmed up my lower body, then I start doing some front crawl or breaststroke combination, freestyle. And I don't go beyond a level 7. I mean, if you go beyond a level 7, you're going into sprint mode territory. Sprint swimming is totally different, okay? You can only sustain that for like one or two laps and then you just your body caves in. You don't want to be doing that. You want to be doing consistently, continuous laps. Okay, the only way you can do it is to go from like level five to level seven at most. Okay, and that's what you see me doing in this footage. All right, just nice and steady, back and forth. And I'm not pushing myself. Okay, same thing with running. We never sprint the entire race. <laughs> that would be stupid. We'd be gassing out easily. We only sprint in like certain periods of time like a few seconds and then but then we go back into jogging or running mode okay which is like a five to seven okay so think of it that way take it slow nice and easy when you're swimming don't don't push yourself too hard or else you'll gas out and that's my third and final tip if you have any other tips on breathing for swimming leave them down below and if you don't know how to swim you want to learn it by taking a course guess what i have a course for you it's called seven day swim it's the best course out there online. You get instant access, you click down link below. It gets you in there and then it shows you the whole regimen of game plan and how I teach everyone I meet for the first time how to swim from A to Z, totally easy, okay? And uh, yeah, join our Facebook group, private, totally free. Click that link down below. We give feedback to each other. We post videos, we post memes. <laughs> You name it, okay? You, you can discuss all your swimming problems in the group and we can help you out totally free, all right? So click that link down below, get instant access. And uh, if you haven't, subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, hit the bell, bing! And uh, I'll talk to you next time, okay? Bye-bye!